اولما صابت کو مصیبت القدست تم مسلحا کل تم ان ہاضا دل ہوا من ان دے ان پھنسے کو واٹ اف سم ڈیزاسٹر ہیز بی فیل یو بیکاز سیونٹی آف دی صحابہ دے ور مارٹیئرڈ اینڈ مینی ادرس ور یو نو انجرڈ ان دی بیٹل آف اوہد اف اے ڈیزاسٹر بی فیل یو ایٹ اوہد مین ایٹ اوہد بیکاز دس از آل ڈسکرپشن آف دی ایونٹس اینڈ دی یو نو اے کمنٹری آن دی ایونٹس آف اوہد قد اسبتم مثلیہ and you had inflicted your enemy twice that the that that you wound because that badr you know 70 were killed another 70 were taken captives so it, it amounted to double here 70 muslims were martyred nobody was captive nobody could be taken captive by the kuffar or mushrikeen but there at badr you had killed 70 of them and another 70 you had taken as prisoners and captives So actually you had in, inflicted on them, on your enemy, twice the infliction that has come to you. So what if you have been inflicted, if you have been given this injury, of, twice of which you have already given to your enemy, but you come to stay, you have started saying, where from has it come? Where from has it come? Is not Allah on our side? If he is on our side, how come? How this disaster, how this conflict, this infliction. So that is the question that was bothering many of the people. Then you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers, قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِكُمْ Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it has come from your own selves. The detail has already come. لَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهُمْ Allah had fulfilled his promise to you. اِسْتَحُسُّونَهُمْ بِإِذْنِي when you are killing them like anything hatta idha fashiltum wa tanazaatum fil amr but when you 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 are loosened you are, you loosened your discipline discipline and you quarrel about the matter and your leader was saying don't move from here and you move from there wa asaytum and you disobeyed the leader then allah subhanahu wa taala gave, gave you this punishment but it is from you not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kultum anna hadha you are saying from where has it come why should it have come to us when we are the people who believe in Allah and Allah is with us kul tell them oh Muhammad sallallahu wa min indi anfasikum it is actually the result of your own misdeed your own error your own mistake your own commitment in Allah ala kulli shayin qadir where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the power He could have condoned your mistake, but he didn't. Because there was a wisdom. He wanted to teach you a lesson. He wanted to differentiate between the true believers and the munafiqeen. If there is no test, no hardships are coming, all will be equally mominin. It's actually the test, the tribulation, which, which will divide and differentiate. But he is someone who has real belief, and he is someone who professes to believe but he is not, not actually believer he doesn't have the real faith that will come you know in the next ayah but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we are all powerful we could have condoned nothing would have come to you we, can, we could do it but we didn't do it and that was our decision why the wisdom is coming in the next ayah وَمَا سَابَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْتَقَلْ جَمَعَانِ فَبَيْزْنِ اللَّهِ again you know repeating of the same thing Whatever came befell you, came on you and befell you on that day on which the two armies confronted each, each other, that was by the leave of Allah, by the ism of Allah, by the permission of Allah. Nothing happened without His permission. It couldn't have happened at all without His permission. No leaf of a, of a tree can move without His permission. So how could 70 Muslims be martyred without the leave of Allah, without the permission of Allah? وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْتَقَلْ جَمَعَانِ فَبِسْتِ اللَّهِ Why? وَلَيَعْلَمَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And this was so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make manifest who are the real Muslims who stood fast who are they who even after infliction of this wound 
they remain faithful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they remain faithful to his his messenger and his uh, apostle Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he wanted to make it manifest and when the Muslims became manifest now it was also clearly seen by people who were the munafiqeen now this is the division that has taken place وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْ قَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ Now this I think, you know, it, it relates to the incident which happened in the very beginning. When Abdullah ibn Ubay and 300 of his men, they left the place of battle, went back to Medina. I think, as far as I can guess, this ayah relates to that incident. وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْ قَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ Definitely, when it was said to them, come on, Go to fight for the cause of Allah. Where are you going? Definitely, the Muslims, you know, the 700 Muslims, which remained with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would have said to them, where are you going? You profess to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you are leaving him here. How? How come? Where are you going? Ta'alao. Ta'atil ufi sabdillah. Abhi fa'u. Come. Join these ranks. And fight for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if not for the cause of Allah, they have to defend Medina. Where are you going? The army has come. 3,000 of them are there. If you know there is a defeat here in the, this field, will not the army go and enter Medina and plunder and loot and kill and, and, and burn? Whatever happens, you know, after the defeat. So these are two things here. Come, where are you going? Come, fight for the cause of Allah. And if not for the cause of Allah, for your own cause, for defending Medina, Abid Fa'u, we have to defend. They said, we don't think that there is going to be any war, any, any battle. What does it mean? It so happens for some, sometimes that apparently two groups are fighting with each other, with each other but they have some behind the scene treaty with each other. They want to only show to the people that we are quarreling. They are not quarreling definitely. So that was their idea which they gave to the people. We don't think there is going, going to be war. They couldn't say anything else. Showing their backs to the battlefield. What else could they say? Well, don't, we don't think there is going to be any war, real war. Now, if we, if we had really known that there is going to be a war, there is going to be a battle, we must have followed you. Hum lil kufre yawmaizin aqrabu min hum lil iman. On that day, they were nearer to kufr than to iman. A munafiq actually keeps on oscillating. La ilaha ulai wa la ilaha ulai. Muzab zabina bayna zalik. Sometimes he is with the Muslims, Mumins. Sometimes he is with the enemies. So munafiqin, you know, two-faced person, double-faced person. He makes friendship with Mumineen also. Maybe that they are victorious, so we must have, you know, good relations with them. But we can't, you know, sever our ties with the kuffar also. If they, they have the upper hand, then, you know, we, we must keep good offices with them also. So they are munafiqeen, they keep on oscillating. La ilaha ulai wa la ilaha ulai muzab zabina bayna zalik. They are not decisively on any side. Neither with the side of the kuffar, nor with the side of the Muslim. Oscillating between them. Now on that day Allah says, this, this oscillation, you know, in this process of oscillation, they were nearer to kufr than to iman. They are saying with their mouth, which is not there in their hearts. They have something else in their hearts, and they are saying something else with their tongues and mouths. Allah very well knows what they are hiding and what they are concealing in their hearts. Again the same thing. Those who are saying about their brothers and they, they themselves had withheld from the war. Either they didn't even come out of Medina at all, the Munafiqin, or they returned back and they sat in Medina waiting for the result of the, of the battle, what happens, which way the winds blow. But some of their brothers, some of their people from their own tribes, their own families, they were the Muslims, no menin, they went into the battle and some of them were martyred and killed and slain. So they said about them, 
had they obeyed us, had they remained here at Medina, not joined Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or had they come back with us from the the battle, then you know they they would not have been slain or killed. Ul fadrau an anfusikumul maut. Say to them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you avert that from your own selves if you can, if you in kuntum sadiqin, if you are truthful, if you are whatever you are saying is true. Even here in Medina, you might be killed. Even here at Medina, you might be, you know, you might die. Maybe some roof, you know, comes on, on your head and you die. Maybe there's some fever and you die. So if they were with us, they would not have been killed. If that is the case, then it means that you have the, this matter of life and death in your own hands. You can control your death. You can, you can save yourself from death. You can, can't do it. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ Again, please note, the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ بَلَا حِيَاهُ وَلَا كِلَّا تَشْعُرُونَ Here you have this, this, the very, this very subject in a more, you know, forceful manner. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ Never think about those who have been killed or slain in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are dead. بَلَحْيَاوْ No! They are living. They are alive. In the رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ They are with their Lord and they are, they are having their sustenance and provision from Him. فَرَحِينَ بِمَا عَطَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَصْلِهِ And they are very, very happy. They are rejoicing with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them out of His bounty. وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَحْلَقُوا بِهِمْ And they are happy for the sake of those مُؤْمِنِينَ صَادِقِينَ True believers who have not joined them up till now لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ They are there, they are awaiting their time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept them also as martyrs. They are waiting for them. The day if they also come, Allah خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَعْسَنُونَ There will be no fear upon them. And they, you will, they will let, not have to grieve any, any more in any case. So this, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this. So maybe our brothers, they are waiting for that. We will find in Surah Al-Azab, you know, the same words. There are from among these moments who have, you know, given their lives and who have fulfilled their covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, there are the others who are waiting for their time for their, for their chance to come وَمِنْ هُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرُ they are waiting for the same thing فَرِحِينَ بِمَا عَطَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ اللَّهَ خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَعْزَلُونَ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِنِعْمَةِ مِنِ اللَّهِ فَضْلِ they are rejoicing with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his bounties وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيُّ عَجْرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't waste the, the reward of those who are true moments. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفُرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَرِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ